Hello, I'm Jim Carey, and I'm going to present today on the scientific rationale and clinical pearls with respect to meniscus allograft transplantation using a soft tissue technique. I initially learned this all soft tissue technique from Dr. Brian Sennett at the University of Pennsylvania, where he was the chief of sports medicine. This technique was reinforced during an ICRS traveling fellowship in Europe in September 2013, where I spent some time with Dr. Peter Verdonk in Belgium. We had Dr. Verdonk as an international guest faculty at the Penn Cartilage Symposium in 2014, where on cadaveric specimen, he demonstrated his meniscal allograft technique along with Dr. Brian Sennett. And finally, Tim Spaulding was our international guest faculty at the Penn Cartilage Symposium in 2020, and he has authored some articles on this soft tissue technique. I knew that there were other techniques out there, and so I looked at this article of expert opinion from the International Meniscus Reconstruction Experts Forum 2015 Consensus Statement, and they concluded based on current evidence IMREF accepts that there is no superiority of one surgical technique over another, bone versus soft tissue. With respect to scientific evidence and evidence-based medicine, there have been three systematic reviews on the topic. The first systematic review noted that different fixation techniques have been described with only a few studies comparing the clinical results of the different techniques and with no proven superiority of one method over the other. All of the studies showed clinical improvement at last follow-up visit compared with preoperatively. The second systematic review focused on how should we secure our transplanted meniscus. And the findings of that study were primarily that no significant differences were found between the soft tissue suture, and there are 485 meniscal transplants in that group, and bone fixation with 489 menisci in that group. The third systematic review was the only one that showed slight benefit of one group over the other. This systematic review found that soft tissue fixation showed higher postoperative IKDC scores than bone fixation. Now, I want to share in my experience what I felt were some of the soft tissue advantages and then I'm going to cover a few of the disadvantages. For advantages, the soft tissue technique involves skills used in soft tissue repair of the shoulder and meniscal root. It uses common instruments in sports medicine. There's less chance for neurovascular disruption, less postoperative pain, which minimizes rehabilitation issues. There's more flexibility for anatomic graft placement in the recipient knee. And it's most consistent with my transplant principles of replacing like with like while minimizing involvement of other structures. Some disadvantages are outlined on this slide. Suture management is more challenging. There's weaker initial fixation about roots, and there's possible suboptimal hoop stress distribution compared to an anatomically placed meniscal allograft with bone. I like to share some decision-making pearls. I always try to assess alignment and correct unfavorable malalignment. I replace like with like at the same time under one anesthetic exposure. Meniscal deficiency is replaced with meniscal allograft. Cartilage defect with cartilage restoration. Ligament deficiency with ligament reconstruction. And I avoid meniscus transplantation in compartments with arthritis, the regional loss of articular cartilage. Here are three technical pearls. The nick and spread technique for the small medial incisions is essential to minimize risk of saphenous nerve injury. Fixation with too many fixation points may lead to postage stamp tearing of the perforation. And over time, I've moved from 10 fixation points to about seven fixation points. And an oblique suture pattern, more vertical than horizontal, seems to work well. Some other advice, the difference between an explanation and an excuse is timing. Tell the patient up front before surgery that the healing rate and long-term survivorship are not greater than 85%. Assess the structure with a second look MRI, second look arthroscopy whenever appropriate. I have a low threshold for second look arthroscopy and assess function and patient-oriented outcomes whenever possible, especially long-term, 5, 10, 25-year outcomes. Here's an example of a second look arthroscopy. You can see the healing about the periphery on the superior and inferior surfaces. It's not uncommon to see a little synovitis at the junction as well. That's what's being outlined at the bottom there. In summary, expert opinion and three systematic reviews note no superiority of one technique over another, although the most recent systematic review did note higher postoperative IKDC scores with soft tissue fixation compared to bone fixation. Correct malalignment and replace like with like to increase the probability of a successful outcome. In general, avoid meniscus allograft transplantation in a compartment with arthritis and evaluate the structure 
with an MRI or second look arthroscopy whenever it's possible and patient-oriented outcome measures at long-term time endpoints. Thank you.